alikuja akachukua sio ni hand kachifa ma ni tissue akaenda washrooms ni comforter nikamuliza what's wrong kaniambia deputy amenipiga alikuwa alika minil akapigwa na this pipe ya bansen bana you know it you know tulikuwa tunachapa na shule like alipigwa everywhere like hata kimwangalia mfura nikamuliza na mapi pingine amekupiga akaniambia everywhere like even head kuna mtu aka notice ebi ajamka so tukaenda tukamwangalia tukamuita we even took that bell to number ya kwa masikio ham nilikuwa mnadhani joke yes tulikuwa tunadhani nile watu na joke na toward extending you like mm. boarding school extension kulala there's a student who came out mm. and she says that you bet ebi I beat. Yeah, Ulim Chapa. Me, me. Yes, you. I don't even want to talk to you if you are that judgmental. The hospital they took my child to did not treat her anything beyond receiving a body. Or even preserve it for that matter. How did she know that my child had a blood clot in her head? Mm. Did she ever hit her before and expected that she would probably have a blood clot i need my president who i voted in i cast my vote for uhuru kenyat i cast my vote for the sake of truth and justice which he swore to to do in this country when he took office i really really need his help my child is not a statistic i refuse she will never be She was not meant to be. She was not. I need I request. In fact, because I have a right for justice in this country. Yes. I demand for the peace of my family. I need justice to be done for my child. and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Wanjiku. Now, three weeks ago, I brought you the story of Abby Noel Samuels, the young girl from Gatanga CCM who mysteriously died. Allow me to take you a bit back. According to the school, Abby was found sleeping and she was experiencing difficulties while breathing. So, they rushed her to the hospital. According to the hospital, they received a dead body. According to the pathology report, Abby had had been hit by a blunt object her mother says three years down the line she is still waiting for answers well after we aired that episode some of Abby's friends and alumni of Gatanga CCM reached out you will hear from anonymous a she says on the night of Abby's murder she was seriously beaten and injured by the deputy principal we reached out to the deputy principal and you will also hear what she has to say we also reached out to the principal of the school who asked us not to record her and after inquiring for a quote off or on record she declined to pick our calls we also reached out to the DCI officer handling the matter he insisted we visit the DCI offices for an update but after calling after texting not much has been done well we are also asking the same question 3 years down the line how can a child die in a government institution no investigation no answers nothing are we going to let abi noel samuels be a statistic this is today's episode of tales of wanjiko komajina ni i'm from nimetoka gizurai lakini wazazi wangu kwa mombasa ilikuwa nasomea gatanga ccm in 2019 yes so ebi alikuwa my friend at the same time alikuwa my classmate nilikuwa naka she was in front and I was alikuwa naka nyuma yangu so ebi alikuwa naka hapa mbele ulikuwa yes. naka hapa nyuma alikuwa naka nyuma mm-hmm. and uh, she was my good friend 
she was a loving girl like hakuwa na issues mob alikuwa too friendly but despite kuna watu wengine maybe walikuwa namchukia yes but she was my good friend watu walikuwa namchukia kwa nini because you know the first week tuli admitiwa you know so some of us vile wanakujanga wanasema the way they are in their families so so vile you know in school wanasema ngati that she was bragging like at the way I say my back is joke Jamaica all those stuffs mm-hmm. so from threes from fours they started uh, like on am chukia like when I'm talk about her mm-hmm. yes but she was my friend we got no one gear yeah to not revise yes she was my good friend mm-hmm. so mm, this one day on friday we went for a cross country and to uh, katoka cross country she liked running a lot actually she was number 5 in that marathon mm-hmm. i go number 5 so katoka marathon it was on a friday evening you took her to cross country at 4 and then like 2 hours to narudi shule so ile kwa jioni jioni tukakuja watu walikuwa wanafua sasa hiyo time ebi akambia dem flani ampake mafuta nywele mm-hmm. so akampaka so hiyo ni after cross country yes after cross country on friday we talk at mm-hmm. mena tabs to go so like is so wet mm-hmm. yes to karubi sasa hapa kwa ground mm-hmm. kulikuwa na ground hapo mbele ya classes kulikuwa na ground hapo mm-hmm. so akambia dem mwingine mimi niko nenda washrooms akambia dem mwingine ampake mafuta nywele it was allowed So akampaka nywele but akamweka style like I could allow the style so nywele kama uko na blow dry ulikuwa unashika katikati na kama umeshuka tulikuwa tunashuka braids mm. unashikia katikati na unafunga ban lakini kama utashuka braids blow dry but ushikie katikati so yeye yeah, aliwekwa style yeah, so yeye yeah, aliwekwa style like this like kama yeye nywele vilikuwa yes so akapaka mafuta akamaliziwa so mimi nikatoka washroom singa mwambia eh hey, toy style jude park za kupata naenda ako around leo utaulizwa but akaniambia ni usiku ndo tutaenda doms mapema preps zikisha tutaenda doms mapema nitatoa nitatoa so nikamwambia okay ipi kuna nikamwambia it's ni sawa so uh, tukaingia class preps zili tulikuwa tuna tukaenda tukakula sapa 6 tulikuwa tukula sapa 6 tukakula and uh, 6:45 bell ya clear prep sikali ikaring tukaenda class so tukaenda class eh kafika tukasoma and around uh, 8:30 tuko tena dom 9 prep za 9 bell ya 9 kisha ndo tuko tena dom so at around 8:30 deputy akakuja alikuwa anazunguka all classes so akakuja juu akaenda south akaenda west akaenda north akuja to east tulikuwa one east so akakuja akuliza who is that girl ameka nyule ni kama shule ni mama yake akaambia can you go to my office akaenda akashuka akalikuwa metense you know alikuwa anogopa mpaka walimu because that thing like ata kuuliza swali yes alikuwa mwalimu alikuwa specific kwa mzoe ana like anaenda anamuuliza swali but sasa ni usiku the teacher yuko around mm. so alikuwa mitense like she's tensed tena ni deputy anasikia stories zake vile mm. ako shule like anakuanga mhash so alikuwa mitense akaenda kwa ofisi so uh, the, i think the deputy sasa akazunguka all classes akaenda kwa ofisi so akarudi class ab alirudi class around uh, 8:48 8:48 8:49 8:50 around there and she came crying but akukuja class because it it was now 10 minutes to go to dorm mm. akakuja akachukua handkerchief class akaenda washrooms mimi nikamfuata juu huyo desk yake anaitwa hakuwa eh nikamfuata washrooms alikuja akachukua sijui ni handkerchief ama ni tissue akaenda washrooms nikamfuata nikamuliza what's wrong kaniambia deputy amenipiga alikuwa alikamenil akapigwa 
uh, this pipe ya Bansen bana you know it you know tulikuwa tunachapa na shule like alipigwa everywhere like hata ukimwangalia mfura nikauliza na mapi pingine anikupiga akaniambia everywhere like even head juu na juu nyele vile alikuwa ameyeka the style alikuwa ameyeka yes so nikamwambia us jali na tutaenda kwanza upwe pen killers kwa mat kwa matron alikuwa hali gani yake ku explain she yeah. was crying even like at us this like all the the old things like statements zote anakupea yes but she was crying aniambia and if you go to buy just because of her hairstyle actually the pal come and mumbia am nyoe you nyoele he be told her you better give me a suspension letter rather than cutting my hair sasa hapo ndo deputy alikasirikia at you are talking to me rude so you are talking to me rude and deputy alikuwa anataka kumnyoa nyoele yes yes so he be alimwambia you better give me a suspension letter rather than cutting my hair sasa deputy hapo ndo alitishikia moto akamwambia you are talking to me rude and I'm the deputy of this school you are not supposed to talk to any teacher rude like that so this is ab telling you yes okay, okay. Mm. allow me ume uh, kabla tuendele ume mention bansen bana yeah. mlikuwa mnachapo aje like si tulikuwa tunachapo migu like una two socks na chapo kuchini like fit your feet so una mm. when you're kneeling yes mlikuwa mnachapiwa wapi kwa ofisi yake ya deputy yes so what type of a person was the deputy she was a very harsh woman like she didn't have pity on anyone like yes alikuwa too harsh baga tu kipata na yeye una sweat like uni yani alikuwa tu anaogope wa shule yes okay so ebi akakwambia teacher wanted to cut her yes yes uh-huh. alafu so mko washrooms so. yes tuko washrooms mm-hmm. but it's like 7 minutes to bell ya, ya nine ring mm-hmm. nikamwambia akaniambia yes data alikuwa anataka kuka yeah, now in english you know she's she was speaking in english akaniambia even she wanted to cut my hair but mimi nikakata nikamwambia nili like sasa na english like mm-hmm. you rather give me a suspension letter then cut of my hair mm. so deputy yapo ndo alikasirikia na akambi akamchapa sasa like excess hata kuliko sasa ile ilikuwa mchapo ya nyuele mm. yes so nikamwambia tu chill hata hapa bell ju tukio washroom saa kuna mwalimu alikuwa like anakuja huko kuangalia kama kuna students nikamwambia tu chill bell twende dom twende kwa mate but nikamwambia uende uchukue dawa uende rest akaniambia mimi I have to wash my clothes education sasa tadi like kila mtu anafuanga na tulikuwa na habit shida ya maji tulikuwa tunatumia ya bohol so alikuwa anapendia congestion so akaniambia fuwe leo education hata kio like kukolide na form 3 na form 4 mm. kamwambia ni sawa but usifue like zote kesho pia tunaweza fuata jioni mm-hmm. so tukaenda tukaenda kwa kwa beli karinya nine tukaenda dom Matron ana anatokanga anaendanga kupikia anaendanga kupelekea principal na deputy kwa teachers headquarters so anakujanga dome like 9:45 so ilibidi to me like tumechill mpaka hiyo 9:45 kapewa dawa kakuja tukaenda tukafua yes akachota maji na kalala katonga good night na kalala mm-hmm. now take me back mm-hmm. to e injury yenye um ebi alikuwa nayo kabla cross country What oh, had happened before? Oh, so, alikuwa on uh, Monday. Mm. Yes, Monday. Mm. Tulikuwa tunafua jioni. But akaanguka na bucket. Okay, like place tulikuwa tunafulia kulikuwa na tiles. Mm. So, pale sisi for months tulikuwa tumepewa kwa kufulia na kuchota maji. Kulikuwa na tiles. So, aka slide no nice sabuni watu ubakisha wanatupa. Yes, mm. to dog so aka slide lakini hizo slippers zile ali slide na zile things zikuwa zake mm-hmm. nizi pata pata mm-hmm. yes so aka slide akaanguka yes tukaenda mati ya mati kena nikamwambia dawa lakini alikuwa anaogopa uma tron pia kwa nini sijui i don't know nikaenda nikamchukulia dawa ulichukua dawa gani pain killers tulikuwa tunapo pain killers hata wewe ndio umwambia una mwana wapi na pop in killers to mambo na mwana tonsils the pop in killers so to go that like from me so here to send me send me kuzoea jua kuko like na dawa ingine maybe sasa who say 
principle of kiusa sana kesi yako like at uko na strict like like una uko na ugonjwa like strict ndo utaitiwa das lakini tulikuwa na nas alikuwa na kuja das days yes so ameanguka on monday yes. aliumia side ali, aliumia aliunguka hivi on the side yes mm-hmm. 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 so hiyo night akaniambia na mwana kichwa tukaenda tukachukua dawa tukarudi yes okay, okay. na so that's on monday yes. so tuesday ako sawa eh. wednesday ako sawa ah, thursday akaenda akaona nas eh. akapewa dawa zingine juzi ilikuwa gani <laughs> yes na Friday akaenda ku Friday na akaenda cross country. So mum, sasa tuko Friday. Yes, tuko Friday. Mumetoka washroom, mumeenda dorm. Yes. Anafua. Yes. Then amelala. Yes. Then what happened? Then at that morning, mimi alikuwa analala dorm gani na ule dorm ma 5. Alikuwa analala kwa dirisha. Na mimi the same same dorm, nilikuwa analala the far end. But kulikuwa like this side na this side. Alafu hapa kuna path, kulikuwa na two doors. Mm. So alikuwa analala kwa hii mlango hapa triple decker na mimi nilikuwa analala huko mwisho like this side mwisho mm-hmm. but it was a double decker yeah. yes mm-hmm. mm, sasa that saturday morning si tukaamka bali ya saturday tulikuwa tunaamka 6:30 it was hiyo ndio ilikuwa time ya saturdays tulikuwa tunaamka 6:30 tunaoga by 7:20 tunafaa kwa class so si tukaoga tukamaliza kwa Saturday tulikuwa tunova like vile mtu anataka mm. like kama ni trucks utama ni ngoya home mm-hmm. even though tulikuwa tunova Saturday mm-hmm. so si tukava na tukaenda tuka, tuka, tukitoka class tukitoka dorm una ni um, kuna mtu wa bell sana ringi bell ya kutoka mm-hmm. this is usually bell mm-hmm. tukitoka but sasa tukitoka una mtu realize ebi ya jam alikuwa analala katikati ya chini katikati ilikuwa tripo deka so 1 2 3 ebi alikuwa analala katikati yes. uh-huh. so kuna mtu aka notice ebi ajamka so tukaenda tukamwangalia tukamuita we even took that bell to bring ya kwa masikio ham mlikuwa mnadhani ni joke yes tulikuwa tunadhani ni ile watu na joke unatoa extending mm-hmm. like mm-hmm boarding yes. work extendisha kulala sasa tulidhani ana extendisha but time ilikuwa imeenda like hata bill ya kutoka dom imeisha bill ya kutoka dom imerigiwa mm. so tukaenda tukamringia bill tukamwambia ebi ebi amka but hakuamka he tuka tukaenda tukaita matron so nyi ndio mnaita matron yes sasa so, mimi tulikuwa like five girls tukaenda tukaita matron Mara na kasema nyinyi wote mnakuja kunitia juu mtu mmoja. Akasema wabaki wawili so sisi tukaenda class watatu tukaenda class wakabaki wasichana wawili dom. So Matro sasa akapigia Prince Prince akakuja na gari yake. Walikuja juu dom huko na space ya kuingia gari akakuja akaweka hapo wakamweka. Wakimtoa alikuwa aje kwa bed mlikuwa mnaona nyinyi kwanza ama mlikuwa class mlikuwa class so nyinyi mlishtukia ameshaenda so, yes si tuliambiwa tu amepeleka usi that you know statement tulipo na matron mm. sisi wale tulienda kuita matron mm-hmm. so tukamuliza ibi ampeleka kama akatwambia yeye ampeleka hospital mm-hmm. yes and then ndo tukakujanga tukaambiwa hiyo sunday morning tukaita ngo parade ndo tukaambiwa that morning that ebi ayuko like tukazungushwa tukazungushwa you know explain you explain you mlizungushwa aje like ebi sju alienda wosi akaambiwa sju ako na blood clot lakini at is alikitulu posture nyingi like akaangamo ni blood clot daktari akajaribu kumtibu akajaribu kumtibu like sasa si tulikuwa like ako ametupeleka njia nyingi sana like atupe tu something direct so according to venye nani alikuwa anawapea yeah, info so according to the principal mm-hmm. aliwaambia hosi walijaribu kutibu yes, ebi walijaribu kutibu ebi so wanasema according to them ebi akifika hospitali then alikuwa Ali, sawa so hata daktari yes, walikuwa wali, na yes, that's, that's the information that's the information you want okay, okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So after all akatuambia she's not more again. Hey, tukafika tu waka faint wengine walikuwa wanalia. Mimi mwenyewe eh hey, I cried that day. 
I cried, I cried like in my heart. Cause I didn't know, but in my like in Yes. What pained you the most? Nini hmm? liku pain sana? Her dying and at the cause, me kile me neza sema like uyu deputy she was the cause but yes je ndo alikuwa msi last time maybe i'm i'm in piga eh so in my heart it was very hard to believe like tuliara tuko tuna nini kwanza sisi wale tuko tunakaa hapo na yeye her bedmates i didn't believe but it was all so so another day to get up and after how long after after two days to go to the parade monday na fridays yes. so that day to little wednesday to come be what to the parade other need to do the kuja all classes akisema tuna to need to parade na prince so si to come be what okay mazishi ya ibi na pango but sisi ati mama ibi amesema ataki kutuona like us like ccm akatwambia ataki kutuona so before like before so that Wednesday on Tuesday the prefect nikambia prefect tuambie class like to contribute to PNC vipi tuko nayo tuka contribute tukapelekea class teacher so class teacher si akamba kafikishie prince story so prince alisema si turudishwe pesa zetu mama ibi amesema ataki usaidizi kutoka CCM alitumia tone gani akiwa parade alikuwa na behavior aje nani the prince nani mwenye alisema mtakikani kwa matanga ya ebi ni the, the principal prince, yes, the principal mama ebi amesema ataki yes, kuwaona yes. nini so aliwaambia aje kama steward muliambiwa aje okay mm. sisi tuliambia prefect wetu mm. aende atuulizie juu sasa najua si kila mtu anaweza reach principal mm. kionekana na like tayari red utasikizwa prefect alikuwa na vata ya red mm. Like so kis kionekana like na hiyo tai na juu unaweza sikizwa. Yes. So nika tukambia prefect aende atuulizie watu wale wataenda tujipa tujipange. Ndio wakaita na parade. That Wednesday mm-hmm. after to make contribute na tukarudishwa pesa zetu that even Tuesday evening. Mm-hmm. Sasa this Wednesday ndo parade tukaitwa parade. Tukasalimiwa, tukulizwa tukwaje. Tukasema tukupoa e eh, akatuambia barrel ya ebi inapangwa but mama ebi amesema ataki kuona watu wa CCM kumazishia mtoto wake ya yeah, even though alitoa pesa sana english yes ataki kuwaona yes muli react aje tulikuwa like mbona akatai like even our class like si ndo tulikuwa tunakaa na yeye tuli tulishuku but tukasema jua tujui ukweli tujui kama prince anaongea ukweli tujui kama mama ibi hivyo ndo amesema so we went with that idea tukasema ni sawa tukarudishwe si contribution zetu na tukaenda class mm. yes. class mkiongea mlikuwa mnaambiana nini watu walikuwa wanasema nini e, si tulishuku hata tu kwa mini historia prince juu kulikuwa na kesi nyingine ya, maz- ya um, student amekufa na this that class class yote kwanza ilienda mazishi so we were like student alikufa yes alikufa aje no huyo aliendanga ali home alikuwa yes mm. alienanga home akakufia home so si tukaambiwa yes hakukufia no. shule na watu wakaenda mazishi yes na her, all her classmates like class nzima of which wana chaguliango specific girls wanaenda the whole class went for the burial yes but him mm. liambiwa si tuliambiwa mm. Mm. atutakikani huko mm. yes so si tukaenda class and we were like no she can't hawezi talk to me about ab ni nini ilituma watu wamchukie sana shule no ab sijui kama kuna mtu ashiongelesha kiswahili she was she had a nice english like alikuwa anaongelesha kila mtu english like hata ukimongelesha kiswahili atasikia ya but hata kujibu na english mm. another thing she was alikuwa anapenda ku interact but some people were reject yes so vile aliona kuna wasi wengine wanam reject she stayed her own 
Yes. Akabaki peke yake. Yes, but in class tulikuwa tu tulikuwa mabishi wake. Mm. Ni nini ilikuwa attract kwake? High English actually. <laughs> <laughs> High English. Mm. Yes, she was talking too nice. So she had nice hair. Yeah, a long one. So we can come after and enjoy like blow dry and after and enjoy. Yes. Okay. okay. She was good. Mm. My name is XY. I'm with girl of Gatanga CCM. I'm here to talk about the disciplinary that I thought had ended years ago after I left the place. Just three years later, to see the story of a girl who died in a school that I had thought had reformed. Okay. Let me ask you, what was your ulinge yo shule lini? Now, just give us a general overview ya yo shule. Okay. I was I got to the school on 2003. And from that year it is in school even the people that asked me I would not recommend anybody to go there. For one, the teachers and the teachers there never cared. You would be sick, you would go to the matron and there was no nurse in the school compound. It, it's only a matron who I don't think had any medical knowledge. So if you go there maybe with a headache, the only thing we'll gonna put up a sick be ni panado, paracetamol, ama triamaji. So by the time you get to get a leave out to go to Kirara dispensary, it's after me kwa sana. Of which if you are sickling child, ama had health issues, ulkuna mbuna jifanya. Until when it gets so late, people pay school fees. How don't you, how don't a full school have at least a qualified nurse in the compound? Mm. How do you have to have one person who is the matron and year nurse? How much would it cost for you to employ a nurse for a school? Mm -hmm. The school fees is not cheap. So even if you decide you're paying a nurse for a man, mm. it's not. Mm. But unless you come go jump, go and jump, ni kasi juu yani it's so bad. Talk to talk to me about muli kwa mna chapo aje shule. Akizunguka namuti akupate namuti kama ni muti akonayo. Kizunguka kama ni makofi yenye mfikiri ndio atakugonga nayo. Kenye mtu atazunguka nayo. Kama liko mepita la ba kachukua pipe anything. Umshawa ichapo na pipe zaban sen bana. Kuna tayari liko na chapa na nazo. Who is this? Even the deputy, even the teachers on duty. Unapata maybe ya konaya na zunguka na ya. Na muna chapo aje, ivi, mkumi wapi? Aki ya mwata kugunga mahali kwenye nataka, ita dependa kona mudugani na nataka kugunga na wapi. So even the possibilities of hitting you kwa kichwa, they are there. So siya tunambuwa eka mkono ivi? Ita dependa meemuka na mudugani yosiko. Talk to me about the issue of hair in that school. You are only supposed to have your hair natural, no shike na nyuma, no fold. What are you and you want to come? Maybe the work or well off or something. What do you want to treat you as? You show on you if you are not bright. At least me, I used to have a new hair because I was bright. Sorry to say it. But shock on you if, like, you come from a well of family because that owner to visiting Siako, like, Aone, and maybe you are not great. Yeah, to them, I don't know. The teachers expected everybody to be over lower. I don't know how to put it in terms of, but exactly. So, ukienda uko na kizungu mingi? Ukienda uko na kizungu mingi, you know your thing. That's not your place. Mm -hmm. You won't threaten them. As you've heard from Anonymous A, Abby was in a lot of pain. And she's also got us asking questions like, why was a nurse introduced to the school just one week after Abby's uh, passing? Is it true that Abby's mother refused them to attend Abby's funeral? Well, you'll get to hear what the mom has to say about it. But as I said, we reached out to the deputy principal of Gatanga CCM. Our phone call did not go as we expected. 
suspected. She declined to comment on the matter and these are the rest of the things that she said over the phone. We also reached out to the principal who also declined to comment. Hello. Hi, good morning, Mrs. Elizabeth. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my name is Lynn Gugi. Mm -hmm. I'm a journalist. Mm. And uh, you are on record. Mm. I have a question about AB Noel. Mm -hmm. There's a student who came out mm. and she says that you bet AB. I bet. Yeah, Ulim Chapa. Me, me. Yes, you. I don't even want to talk to you if you are that judgmental. No, you know, it's my right to give you a right of reply. Hello. Hi, Miss Elizabeth. Yes. As I was saying, you know... I, I thought that the case is with the police and we should leave them to do their work. But you know... If... Let them do their work. Okay. If they find me guilty, that is okay. You know, and you... let them do their work. You know, as I say, I, I beg you respect that. You know, I'm I'm just trying to get your side of the story. I, I'm not going to give any side of the story because the police has that case. Okay, all right. Yes. So you do not want to comment no, on no, the no, issue. No, no, no. Okay. Let the police do their work. Okay, all right. Yes. Okay, thank you. The case is with the DCI. Well, Abby's mother, as you get to listen to her next, is going to tell you how much nothing has been done on this case. She says the DCI are not doing anything. Well, we, as I said, we reached out to the DCI officer and this is exactly what we requested from them. But three days later, nothing much has been done and no access for an update has been granted. Get now to listen to Abby's mom, a woman crying for justice, a woman crying for closure. And as I asked you before, Will we let Abby Noel Samuels be another statistic? Mama Abby, yes, how are you? I'm very well. You're good? Yes. It's been a while since we spoke, eh? yes. but at least I see we are having people coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a statement from one of the girls mm -hmm. who was Abby's friend in school. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are keeping her name. Uh, we cannot disclose her name, mm -hmm. but you've had an opportunity to listen to what she said. Yes. What are your thoughts? I can't say that I, I almost did not think in my thoughts mm -hmm. that there was a possibility of such a thing. Mm -hmm. But from what the encounter that she gave, it confirms to me some of the questions that I had. Mm -hmm. The fact that... Uh, the deputy principal is directly linked to the last moments of my child in Gatanga CCM, now St. Annie writes Gatanga Girls, mm -hmm. just confirms my wildest of fears. Because this woman, if I can just take you back, yes. on Saturday the 9th of March, I walk into this, I drive into the school compound with my then boss and friend, mm -hmm. Harriet, and right after the gate, getting in, after the security check right inside the compound, I meet her. And I'm sitting on the, dry, on the passenger side in the, dry, uh, uh, in the car, mm. and I ask her, Mualimu, what happened to my child? This is a parent who has just lost a child to death in the school environment. This is the deputy principal of the school. Yeah. And she just walks past me, and these are her words. Hata mimi sijui, ni hivo tu principal na mesema. This is the second in command in this institution. And she just walks past me. What could be more important that day? There was no fire in that school. There was no riot. There was not an invasion. But she walked right past me like it didn't mean anything to her. Mm. Of course that's true. Now I know it didn't mean anything to her. What I concluded, now that I know a little more from that day, is that she was guilty and she knew what she had done to my child and her conscience could not allow her to face me. Mm -hmm. And that's why she walked past me. Yeah. In a half. Mm -hmm. That's, 
exactly what the principal said to you. Who does that? Because she could not maintain. She could not maintain the eye contact. She couldn't. Yeah. Guilt was all over her. Yeah. And the fact that I showed up, she had to show out. Or maybe the principal, after coming from the morgue, had to tell her, you need to leave now. Mm. I do not know what arrangement they had. Yes. But for me, that, that, just, that just shows that someone is afraid. Mm. Because if you're not, and you feel the weight, she's a woman, she's a mother. I had had conversations with her before. How would you treat another mother who is mourning casually like that? You are the second in command. This mm. is not the gate man. Mm. This is not the cook or another subordinate staff. This is the deputy principal of the school. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you hear Abby was openly discriminated in the school, mm -hmm. mocked by even the form threes and the form fours mm -hmm. by the teachers, mm -hmm. how does that make you feel? That really breaks my heart deeply, deeply, deeply. Because no matter what Abby did in that school, I was available. I was available. And the school has a policy. They suspend students. They even expel them. If Abby was the wrong character or the fruit that never fit in that community, they had an option of calling me and telling me, you know what, we cannot contain your child in this school. Not because of what she has done, but because of who she is, she doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. Please try take her elsewhere. Mm. I know the Ministry of Education even gives transfers of school fees. When you move your child from one institution to the other, yeah. you follow up, the Ministry of Education will write a check to go to the school you've sent your child to. Mm. I didn't even need that. Yeah. I just needed my child well, and I needed my child alive. Did anyone ever tell you the deputy principal, the way now our girl said, mm -hmm. bet Abby that night, the night to her passing? Did anyone ever, w when you, even in the course of the investigation, has anyone ever come out and told you the deputy principal punished Abby? No. Called Abby to her office? No. And bet her? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But one thing I can point back to is, on the morning of Saturday 9th, when I was just leaving my, my compound, going now to Gatanga, to Naidu Hospital, sorry, I got a call from one of the former teachers of Ebi from her primary school, mm. who was the then head of school of Logos Christian School, called Mr. Mwai. Mm. And Mr. Mwai told me that first he questioned where I was and I explained to him that mm -hmm. I was my heading out. Yes. And he told me that he had received a call from a lady who said she's the deputy principal of Gatanga CCM who mentioned that Abby was sick last night around 11 p.m. Hold that. Yes. He told you yes. the deputy said Abby was sick yes. last night. night. Around 11, 11 p.m. Yes. Might you happen to know what time the kids go to sleep? I'm assuming around 9. So that's how when they leave for preps. So how does she get to know Abby was sick at 11 a.m. and there's no report of Abby having gone to the matron at 11 a.m.? That is the big question. And at this point in time, honestly, if I really need that woman questioned, I need her to be questioned and questioned squarely because she knows a lot. She never mentioned to me as the parent that my child was sick the night before. She never mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. She did not even mention anything to do with Friday that pertains my daughter. Yes. All she told me is that my daughter did not wake up that morning and that she, like the other girls, and that she was not well. They yes. first f found out she was not well in the morning. Yes. But she mentioned to Mr. Mwai through a phone call that my child was sick the previous night at, at around 11. 11 p.m. How did she know that? Was she the one who was with my child that night before she died? What did she do to her? Uh, the lady said they brought in a new nurse. Mm -hmm. just yes. a week after Abby's yes. passing. Yes. Is that strange that the school 
would now bring a professional because they said every time the kids got sick, mm -hmm. they would just be given, you know, yeah. blue veins, mm -hmm. pain, not, was it, is it strange for you that one week after Abby's passing, they brought in a professional? Of course, because now they want to sanitize the institution. Because these girls or the school could only have a nurse coming in on Thursday. And Thursday apparently was serious cases who have listed their names down. Does sickness wait? Does sickness wait? I understand that this government has issued NHIF cover to all public high school students. I understand that there are schools strategically around many of these institutions, including private hospitals. Yes. You will be treated, even taken overseas for treatment on NHIF as a student. What is this business about bringing a nurse once a week to an institution of over 900 students? People fall sick every other day. No one plans, I am falling sick tomorrow. Or I'll fall sick next month. So obviously, after my child has died, after they have killed my child, now they bring in a nurse to try look like they're proper. To try look like now they care. You're not a doctor. Even when you go to a doctor, the doctor will ask you, how are you feeling and stuff like that before they prescribe medication for you. How do you go and tell somebody you're sick? They do not have medical background. And yet they are the ones who have been put in that office for you to actually go to when you are unwell. And all they can give you is paracetamol or brufe. Yes. And then let you wait out. So assume, I'm assuming because a nurse was coming to that school every Thursday, fall sick on a Friday. You don't know what's ailing you. You're given brufen to take. The maximum days you can take painkiller is three days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're still sick. You have three other days to wait for a nurse to come. Yet, there is a hospital within the vicinity of that school. But the school won't take you to a hospital. What is the use of the government now actually giving NHIF cover to these students? Why is the government dispersing funds for this if the school management will not actually adhere to that cover? What is its use? Mm. What is its use? Mm -hmm. Grown people, young and old, go to hospital and on NHIF cards. Now suddenly, someone thinks that uh, a nurse would be able to, to doctor the children now. Yet the government has given... So these guys are actually running institutions like their homes. Mm. It is, it's like the Ministry of Education is not even in control anymore. It is said that Abby's uh, classmates, they had even contributed money. They were even planning to come uh, for the funeral, but they were called in an assem the assembly and they were told Mama Abby says she does not want to see any of you there. And the money was refunded. Did you ever call the school to say, I don't want anyone coming to my child's burial? No. The answer is absolutely not Lynn. I'm not inhuman. Absolute, I am not inhuman. And it hurt me that even those girls, because it's not just about my child, those girls, I am sure so many of them hurt. And I am sorry, it is not my fault. I did not stop any girl. I did not stop anyone from coming to my daughter's burial. It wasn't a celebration. It was a painful period for me and my family. The principal of Gatanga CCM now St. Annie Wright never called me. She has my phone number. She has my husband's phone number on file. She never called me. The management of Gatanga CCM never called me. That same deputy principal who was calling me on 9th in the morning never called me. Nobody, nobody called me. But I got a strange call from somebody who claimed to be a parent of Gatanga CCM. One of the parents. Now, we all know that people take advantage of situations. 
We all know in this country, people take advantage of situations for whatever it is. But this man identified himself, I think, as Mr. Irongo. Now I know that there is Mr. Irongo who was my, my daughter's maths teacher. Could he have been the one who was being used by the principal to talk to me? Why wouldn't he identify himself directly and say, my name is Mr. Irongo and I am, or I was your daughter's maths teacher? Isn't it also strange that a parent from the school could randomly just get your number and call you? I actually thought that personal information is private. And especially when it, you, you entrust it to institutions anywhere. Your personal information, you just don't dish it to people anyhow. But then it's only strange only one parent would exactly. call. Exactly. One would parent, assume 20, one parent would call. out of 900, just one. Maybe he was important. Maybe he cared more than the rest. I don't know. Maybe he cared. Mm. He could have probably been the angel in that situation. But how? I haven't, I don't know you. This is not the school calling me from their official numbers or even the principal or the deputy principal's number. This is a total stranger that I do not know of who is identify himself as a parent. How will I know mm. that it is indeed true? Mm. How? And talking in a very quiet, full of echo space. How will I know? What were they so afraid of that they wouldn't talk to me? In fact, let, leave that alone, Lynn, calling me and asking me. In the file, my daughter's file in Gatanga CCM, even her home address is there. Could they not come? My home address is, is available on Google Maps. If they indeed wanted to come, they would have. So I'm not an excuse. I am not an excuse in mm. this situation. Mm. It's, it's, just, it, it's just a story that it's, it's a thing they, they tried to use. So they had to look for a way how to get out of it. Well, they successfully did it. Mm. Yes, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. In the assembly, mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, principal uh, was announcing uh, Abby's uh, death, mm -hmm. she told the students that Abby died while undergoing treatment, blood clot and everything. What did they tell you, Abby? Uh, uh, what did the school tell you about Abby's death and the hospital? The school said they did not know. Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened to her. She just did not wake okay. up like the rest of the girls in the morning. Hold that thought. Yes. In the hospital, mm -hmm. did any of the doctors attend to Abby treating her and gave a confirmation upon her blood clots? In fact, the doctors, their note was very direct. Yes. They received a body. That body did not undergo surgery, did not undergo scanning, did not undergo any procedure within the hospital to ascertain internally what could have gone wrong with it. The hospital received a body. A body. Yes. The school principal say they don't know what happened. Yes. But in the assembly, mm -hmm. they are telling the students Abby passed while well undergoing treatment. Mm -hmm. She had blood clots. How did the principal know? before even an autopsy is done and she's not a doctor and she's not a medic and the hospital they took my child to did not treat her anything beyond receiving a body or even preserve it for that matter how did she know that my child had a blood clot in her head mm. did she ever hit her before and expected that she would probably have a blood clot does this make you want to connect dots? The fact that Abby that night was beaten by the deputy principal might have, might there be a chance that the deputy told the principal that she had physically abused Abby and now they were joining the dots? I'm struggling. Why stand in front of an assembly? Tell the kids, the students, Abby died in the hospital. She had blood clots. How would you know? You know, that question, that principle <coughs> really needs to answer. V needs to answer this question. She needs to explain. V needs to explain. I'm assuming a deputy principal and a principal of a school have a close relationship. 
and especially when it comes to issues with the school, they consult with each other, I'm assuming, because they are the bosses of the institution. Mm. Obviously, obviously these two talked. And I'm imagining they probably even talked about it the night before. Mm. Because for the deputy to mention about my child being sick the night before to somebody else, thank God for that. I'm sure the principal even knew about it. So this entire cover-up of she didn't wake up in the morning was a well-planned one. Mm. You came out three years ago. Mm -hmm. Your story is known now. I believe every organization in this country has heard about Abby's death. Yeah. What has been done? Well, to be honest, I sometimes it, it feels bad to even sing the national anthem. It feels bad because this is my country. This is my country. I sing the national anthem with a lot of faith. But the truth is that over the years, I feel just like I've lost faith in this country. I've just lost faith in this country. Everywhere you go, you just told stories. There are many good people, please don't get me wrong, there are many good people in this country who do their job, who do the due diligence. But in equal measure, there are very many bad people, very many bad people who don't care. They're probably just there for a salary, I don't know. They will want to cover up at every given moment. Mm. Why do you go, how do you take a, a job, you, st you oath, you, you, I mean you take an oath, you swear to abide by and then you don't. Me I had people calling me, pretending to be DCI or being them and asking me or they need me to fuel the car. You have authorities in this country giving you stories about, oh we are doing this, we are doing this, just managing you psychologically. And then after you talk to them, they, they grind you up emotionally, take you back to the pains that really hurt you. And then after you leave them, it's like they pack up and just move on with their life. So you are here thinking things are happening and they are not. They are not. The Teacher Service Commission, what is their mandate when it comes to maybe even the conduct and security of, of, or the behavior of teachers in institutions? Do they care or their job is just to post teachers and earn salaries? The Ministry of Education, all these things that are happening, what is their mandate surely? Will things like this keep happening in institutions of learning and you move on? It's every calendar year full of activities. Does it even bother your conscience when you sit in your office and you call yourself the Minister of Education in this country and it doesn't bother you that children are being killed in schools by the teachers who are under your docket? It doesn't bother you. The president of this country swore to protect the rights of Kenyans. Is my child not one? <laughs> Is my child not one? She's one. Or maybe she's a child of a lesser human being. I don't know. If my child was affiliated to a politician or a powerful person in this country, I promise you heads would have turned. But no. You think I'm... People think I'm seated here telling a story. It doesn't give me joy to just be talking about my child's death like this. It doesn't. It does not. It hurts me. It hurts my family. It hurts my children. It hurts even her friends. I'm not, I'm, I, I just don't want to tell stories. I don't. This is my child. She meant a lot to me. If she didn't mean anything to somebody else, she meant a lot to me. And for you right now, I know you said you won't keep quiet until something is done. No. What What are the three things that you want done right now? We are not even waiting for tomorrow. 
if this if anyone who cares is listening, if anyone thinks Abby should not be a statistic, mm -hmm. what are the three things that you genuinely, badly want done right now? First, um, I need this investigation done and completed. I hate when I hear things happening, very, very many bad things happening. Obvious things that you can see with your eye lean. And the police say, we are doing investigations. What more do you need besides what you have been told? And it is evidence and it matches. It just gels with what more do you need? It's been three years. Investigation. What investigation are you looking for to find of an incident that happened within a period of a month? Is the principal and the deputy, are they still in the same school? Yes, they are. They are. They are still in that school. At the comfort of their offices, where is, there is where they were questioned. Nobody ever pulled them to a police station or asked them anything away from their comfort. So they feel untouchable, in essence. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they had it all under control. They think they have it all under control. My child is not a statistic. I refuse. She will never be. She was not meant to be. She was not. I need, I request. In fact, because I have a right for justice in this country, yes. I demand for the peace of my family. I need justice to be done for my child. And for every other, for every other child in this country who has actually suffered in the hands of teachers. The very people that you entrust your children to. The very people that are grown-ups you are assuming. A lot of those women and men are older than me. I thought wisdom comes with age. Now I know different. There's no way how this can just be swept under the rug. This is not an everyday story. This is not just a story. It's not. One life is too many. And if maybe they are into some rituals of just killing students, then we need to also know so that you don't take your child to a place that is going to swallow your child. Mm -hmm. I demand for that justice to be done to my child. I can never keep quiet, Lynn. The worst thing I will do is keep quiet. I will talk till the day I die. I will talk till the day I die. If changes don't happen to these institutions, our children are just going to die. It is not just for Abby. It is for many of them. Many. Mm. If they've not died, they've been broken. They've been psychologically tortured. Years of trauma. Why would you go to a school to get education to go get traumatized? Such that you are living an adult life broken because of the things that happened to you while you were young in mm. school. Mm. Mm -hmm. You take your child to school, you pay school fees, you buy everything for someone to go kill your child, surely. See a father liata yo masomo ikai. If that is the thing, see a father liyo masomo ikai. What else do you want done? I need the president of this country to up his game. I know he's just about to get out of office. But that doesn't mean that this cannot be done. There are many things that start and people leave office and, and they are completed by whoever comes in. Mm. But I need my president who I voted in. I cast my vote for Uhuru Kenyat. I cast my vote. But for the sake of truth and justice, which he swore to, to do in this country when he took office, I really, really need his help. This cannot just go. It cannot. It cannot just go. Yeah. It cannot. Yeah. What message do you have for the deputy principal and the principal and everyone else who participated in wanting to cover this up? The truth is that these people are in they're animals. They're inhuman. I I 
I honestly hate the day I stepped in the gates of that school. Not because of the school, but because of these people that call themselves the principal and the deputy principal and, and all of them in that school. I hate it. I regret if I have a regret in my life. If I have a regret in my life, is stepping in that compound. I wouldn't be talking about this. I wouldn't be holding, I wouldn't be having this pain in my life if I never stepped foot in that school. Mm. It's like I took my child to a death's den. It's like I took to my child, my, I took my child to some animals that were just gonna eat her alive. Because before they, they ensured that they are killing her, they made sure to try and break her. And when they couldn't break her, they couldn't. They couldn't break who she was. I really regret that. And I also regret that I actually listened to the Minister of Education, talking about every child has to transition to high school. If I knew back then, Lynn, my child would not even have gone. Because that same minister who was saying all children have to go to high school or oh, you will mobilize chiefs, 100% transition, is nowhere to be seen three years later, has done zero three years later after my child was killed in that school. So those sentiments are useless to me. I wouldn't have. Yeah. She would have stayed home. I wouldn't have bothered. That rush that parents always have in January, I swear before God, me, never. I, I will never, ever, ever. It's not worth it. Mm. This is my personal opinion. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. The way I feel, I wouldn't have. Mm. It's so stressful, it's straining. Oh, you know, you, you, you are fearing, what if she doesn't go, what if it, and then? Then this happens and they're nowhere. They don't give a sh shit mm. about it. Mm. No one cares. Mm. Uh, they move on, they give press briefs about other things. They're earning money left, right, and center. They're still working. Mm. For them, it's a job. It's not a calling. So in their soul, they really don't care. Mm. Yes. To everyone that's willing to participate in demanding, you know, justice for AB, even to the students who are now coming out, everyone that has said, you know what, enough is enough. I've held it so long. I need to let it out. What would you tell them? The worst thing that you can do in this country is keep quiet. The worst thing you can do in this country is keep quiet. Because today it's Mama Abby. Tomorrow you are a student. You will come out, whatever path you choose for yourself in life, you will be a mother one day, whether through biological or you adopt another child but you will be a parent your silence will come to bite you because you kept quiet and you set precedence for this ill to actually grow and get wider and wider deeper roots by the time you are a parent it will be so hard to undo some of these things so if we are to make a difference to be honest that change has to start happening. You have to speak up. You will be threatened, but you will not be threatened forever. This person will probably enjoy political protection for a while, but even that politician or whoever is protecting her will die and she will be left bare. Me, I have the protection of God. They know where I live. By the way, I'm not even scared. They can come for me too. What will I, what, 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 what is left? What is it? Yeah. Hey, see, all of us will die. Yeah. 
And if I die, I'll go to my father in heaven. And I'll see my child there. But maybe they will go to their father in hell. And they will not see us mm. living or experiencing the joy that we will have there. Yeah. They will go to their father in hell. Mm. So the best thing every person can do right now, you're a parent, even if your child is in kindergarten, your child is growing up in this country. You can't think because mine was a 15 year old in 2019 who just died, that by the time yours is becoming that age or whatever, you'll be safe. Mm. No, we are just setting precedents for wrong things to happen. Yeah. Look at the news every single day. In Kenyans, we are just quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will tell me sorry. You will tell my daughter, rest in peace. Me, I said my daughter will not rest in peace oh, until this is resolved. There is no resting in peace here. What do you mean rest in peace? Did she ask for it? She didn't. She didn't ask to rest. So you can say that. Okay, fine. No problem. Because you feel it's probably a nice way to say, to say it. But, but me, mm -mm, my child is not resting in peace. Until this is she solved. She is not resting in peace until her murderers are brought to book. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's not happening. It's not happening. It is not happening. Mm. Yes. Do you have a lawyer? Well... <sighs> I don't. I really don't. Because if I did, we would have progress. I don't. There are people who stepped in um, some time back to help on, on this pro bono? Pro bono. But that also just died somewhere. You know, you're talking to people, you're calling, you're telling them, they tell you, oh, I'm on leave, I'm on this, I'm on this, okay. You slowly but surely re realize yes. uh, it was for that moment yes. and it's gone. Mm. It's another file mm. in the archives. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I do not have a lawyer. I would honestly wish to have one. I do not know how I will be able to pay that lawyer. Because I really need, I really, really need this to be done and done in the right way. Justice delayed is justice denied. Absolutely. Please do not call me to your office and tell me, even if it takes 10 years. I don't need 10 years. 10 years is too long. She it's been three. Been, she would have been, in 10 years, she will be 28. She would probably be working. God. The last time I went to vote, in 2016, she 17. went with, 2017, mm. she went with me. Oh. And she told me, Mom, See, we Kenyans vote every five years. I said, yes. So the next one would be in 2022. She would have been voting with me. She said, Mommy, we will queue here with you. We will vote. She will not be voting. Yeah. I know that one vote probably means nothing to somebody. But maybe that one vote is what guarantees victory. So one is a significant number. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I do not know how I'm going to do this. I honestly don't. But um, I know Kenyans have prayed for me. I know Kenyans have stood by me. Yes. I really need a, a criminal lawyer. Whatever, we, I, 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 Lynn, Lynn, I don't it's know okay. how this is going to happen. It's going to happen. But I, I really need this to actually hit the floor of the courts. Yes. And the soonest possible. Mm. I need investigations to be done and completed. I, if I had money, me, if we had that money, I would even hire detectives. I would. To actually unravel this. Because maybe those ones who are in office of the DCI and everyone else are probably too busy with too many assignments. Yes. Yeah. But because I know the constitution of Kenya allows me as an individual to actually go to court and file a complaint or file a matter. If I had those in 
because you can't approach court empty handed with you have to go with evidence you have to go with evidence the evidence is there but they are sitting on it because they know after some time itaisha tu mm itakuwa tu ni episode na atanyamaza god please do not allow this to happen don't allow this to happen mm. do you have a pay bill number i had one yeah actually had one a uh, 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 three years and go I'll share with you yeah see if it can be activated if not get a new uh, th- the reason i'm saying this guys it's very important for us to have a kitty where you can be able to even pay for your own legal services mm-hmm. there's danger when people do things pro bono mm-hmm. i understand people are free spirited they want to help but people get tired yeah. along the way so i think it's time now we even had a legal ki- uh, a kit where you can just get something if you want to move around if you want some investigations done here and there i think that would be a good idea so we even as we are speaking i know you will give give it to me and you guys you can see it right here and even your phone number where people can be able to channel uh, the support and even reach out to you the number would be um, my my number is 0718 yeah. 384 mm-hmm. 377 okay yeah. and we also have the airtel one do you want to give yes, that the, out the for air, information yeah the airtel is 0732 yeah. 84770 thank you we are making a progress here it might look small but i'm telling you justice will finally be served you know she's not going to be a statistic Mm-mm. and i can't sit here and tell you it, it is i hate telling people that it is not well no, it, it is isn't. not well it is not well but i know she also has a fighting spirit and i know right now guys the only energy i have right now to run such campaigns it's justice for baby david and justice for abby i know many of you have written to me many of you have told me what is happening to their children how they lost their sons and daughters and i can tell you one step at a time my team and i we will get into that we will even form a special section in our own company to handle such cases but for now I'm asking you not to be quiet keep screaming keep shouting justice for AB justice for baby David we cannot afford to be quiet i love a uh, quote in uh, MLK and she just said it you know you know justice delayed is justice denied you know and injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere it breaks my heart that you can air an episode have it watched by all almost half a million people and the organizations that are supposed to take up these cases they are sitting there waiting for this to be just another story well allow me to introduce you to a very different platform because here we just don't cover stories here i won't bring a story and then we shut up here we are going to follow up until something is done until tables start turning because i refuse to accept that we have commissions in this country and we don't even have one that has been formed for ab that has been formed to investigate what actually happened to ab i refuse and i refuse to be those people who just bring new stories uh, you know me i keep saying me i'm well protected you can quote me on this no matter what happens to me me god has me he has me figured out I'm well protected. So I I I I'm not scared of anything and I'm asking you not to be because as she said next it might be your child might be your sister might be your brother might be your son yeah Abby and baby David they had so much to live for and now we want to reduce them to statistics I refuse so join me this is a call to action to you to be one of those people who just does not watch and decide my god that story was so emotional i felt for the mom i felt for the oh no 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 i appreciate you communicating your thoughts but after the story was so emotional what are we doing about it raise your voice go to your social media platforms keep screaming justice for abby justice for baby david until something is done i appreciate your love and support i that one i genuinely do 
and I appreciate the support I get from my team. Legendary camera person and director. Sometimes I watch, wish I could pan this camera to you. Sometimes I watch him listening to these stories and I wonder what's going on in Ed's head. We walk in this country bringing you all these stories and they are never easy to cover. Our editor, Chebet Kirui, thank you for everything that you do. Our other editor, David Moridi, and of course, our mentor, Saveli Barashkov, who is still stuck in Ukraine, but who is still trying to mentor us through all this. I appreciate everyone who takes their time to walk this journey with us. And even as you are watching, Abby's pay bill number is right here. It's very important for us to have a kitty that can be able to cater for small expenses here and there. Her mom's contact details have been here on the screen. And of course, my email is right here on the screen. If you know anything, if you want to be part of this conversation, drop me an email and let's walk through this journey together. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Tales of Wanjiku. See you on the next one. And I hope by the time I'm bringing you another update in relation to Bib, to uh, Abby, in relation to baby David, it's because tables have been turned. It's because tables have been turned. That's the only update I want to bring you. But I can't do it alone. So walk with me. Just walk with me, okay? Thank you.